Hello music lovers, welcome to the channel. Today I bring you some very exciting news from Gibson Guitars. That is the June 2021 release of the Noel Gallagher J150. If you don't know who Noel Gallagher is, chances are you've heard of his songs. Uh, he was the songwriter, lead guitarist from one of the most successful rock bands in the UK, that is Oasis. After Oasis called it quits, uh, Noel has continued his recording and performance career as the front man for Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds. Definitely check them out if you're not familiar. But uh, in this digital age, unless you just woke up from being in a coma for the last 30 years, I guarantee you you've heard at least one song, Wonderwall. Okay, enough ridicule. Let's talk about the guitar. Now, in full disclosure, I'm a huge Noel Gallagher fan. I'm a huge Oasis fan. Have been ever since they hit the scene back in the early 90s. Uh, loved all their music, but especially their acoustic music. And uh, Noel is a very particularly talented songwriter that I just really connected with uh, early in my guitar playing. And uh, I've played guitar a long time. You know, Noel is not the most technical guitar player in the world, but he is a great songwriter. When I read recently that Gibson was going to be doing a Noel Gallagher J150, number one, I thought it was an April Fool's joke. I couldn't believe it. I thought, this is just too good to be true. Uh, this particular guitar has followed Noel uh, for the majority of his career, I'd say over the last you know, 10, 15 years. Uh, he's always been a fan of these style guitars, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But in March of 2021, Gibson released a one minute long teaser trailer introducing the No Gallagher guitar. And I loved it. They had back play of uh, Little by Little from uh, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants album playing in the background. And it was just fantastic. I knew at that very moment that I, whatever I had to do, I have to get one of these guitars. I have never been this excited about a new guitar release ever in my entire life. And I'm 50 years old. been playing guitar for 30 years. I consider myself, you know, I, I try to keep abreast of all the latest in guitar news. I'm a, a gear geek. I'm a big Oasis fan, a big Noel Gallagher fan. And I was just shocked that I had not heard or gotten any wind of this. So it was quite the surprise to me. So after the announcement, I started doing like anybody would do, start searching on the internet. And I see a mention of it from 2019 in an interview that Noel get, did saying that, uh, Gibson had actually uh, studied his J150 guitar, took a bunch of pictures, and basically wanted to do an exact you know, replica of it. In addition, he also said that a whole new album of songs that he uh, had written during the Oasis era would be released sometime this year, so that's also exciting. But then it was indeed confirmed by Gibson that they actually had been made and would be released in June of 2021. And uh, Gibson actually did a one-minute teaser sort of trailer video. Uh, I'll put a link to it down below. I don't want to post it here because of copyright, but uh, it's really cool. I think you'll love it. So to understand the Gibson J150 model, not just Knowles, but uh, all of them in general, uh, you kind of have to go back into time and know what the model J200 is. Sometimes it'll be referred to as an SJ200. It's basically a large jumbo guitar. Usually a lot of times in the Gibson line, the J will stand for jumbo. It is a beast of a guitar. It's huge in nature. Uh, it has a spruce top and maple back and sides. And the cool thing about this guitar is it really, really records well. Uh, if you hear this guitar, which I know you've heard before, if you ever have listened to the radio or music of any genre, really, uh, it's very prolific in uh not only rock and roll, but just you know, music in general. The J200, which the J150 is loosely based on, has a lot of ornamentation to it, a lot of very expensive binding all over it, uh, lots of expensive inlay. And the J150 model was basically the same guts or the same bones of a J200, but without a lot of the uh, binding along the neck or the headstock. Uh, things of that nature. Sometimes the woods maybe are not quite as, you know, quadruple A, maybe a double A uh, flame maple versus a presentation style. 
And of course, because of this, it came in at a lower price point. Now, they only made the J150 for just a, a handful of years. And Noel apparently acquired this one uh, straight off the rack, as he said, from a shop in London. And has just basically loved it ever since. He claimed that he has written a lot of songs on that guitar and just fell in love with it instantaneously. One of the features I was very pleased to see that will be uh, included in this particular model uh, for Noel Gallagher is uh, LR Bag's Anthem pickup system, which uh, basically sounds very, very natural. It sounds very much like an acoustic guitar, unlike a lot of uh, acoustic pickups that sound very sort of tinny and thin. Uh, in fact, for a long time before this particular LR Bags model was introduced, he used a sound hole pickup by LR Bags called the M1A, and it's also a great pickup, but doesn't quite have the same nuances that, you know, just miking an acoustic guitar in the studio would have. But this new system has some technology in it that are basically transducers that sort of go microphones actually that go up underneath the bridge plate and it gives it a very very natural acoustic sound. I'm really pleased that they're going to be including that with the guitar. One other feature that Noel's guitar has that's sort of unique is uh, something he did just to sort of as a nod to his uh, appreciation of Adidas tennis shoes and it's a little colorful Adidas sticker that he put uh, right there on the top of the guitar. You can see it there in the picture. And so I was very pleased to learn that they would be including an exact reproduction authorized by Adidas of this sticker just in case somebody wanted it to make it look exactly like Knowles. Now, putting stickers on very expensive guitars, eh, that's an individual choice that I think people will have to make. But uh, in a case like this, if you put the sticker on, nobody's going to hold it against you. Now, this guitar is special. They're only making 200 of these worldwide. Uh, it's rumored that only 75 would remain in the United States. The rest would be, you know, exported all over the world. I would imagine a good number of them would be going to the UK. And the price is not cheap, coming in at about $4,300 US. Now, a lot of times with these special edition guitars, limited edition guitars and signature models like this, they do not budge on those prices. Even if you get it to a dealer, they're not going to cut you a break because they know that there's only so many made and collectors will scarf them up. Uh, hopefully, a lot of players and Noel Gallagher fans will be buying them in addition to collectors, but unfortunately, a lot of these have already been pre-sold. Uh, to my knowledge, there are none or maybe just a handful that remain uh, unsold thus far. And I would not be a bit surprised if some unscrupulous people ordered these for the sole purpose of knowing that there would only be 200 of them and they would immediately list them on eBay or Reverb and jack up the price because they know that a collector or a No Gallagher fan such as myself would pay out the nose to get one because they're not making any more of them. Now again, when talking about the J150, uh, one has to go back to the J200 as sort of, you know, where it began. And... There are a lot of notable users of the J200. Uh, it's sort of a who's who of great songwriters, including you know Bruce Springsteen, Led Zeppelin's Jimmy Page, U2's Dave Evans, better known as The Edge, King himself, Elvis Presley, uh, and notably uh, two Beatles, George Harrison and John Lennon, uh, who was playing this J200 in the Let It Be sessions. Possibly could be George's guitar, but still kind of cool nevertheless. It's ironic because, uh, you know, a lot of Noel's early songwriting was often compared to the Beatles, and he's gone on record saying they're probably most likely his greatest musical influence. Some other J200 users were so prolific in their use of this instrument that Gibson graced them with their own signature model, including The Who's Pete Townsend, Bob Dylan, Emmylou Harris, and the Rolling Stones guitarist Ronnie Wood. Uh, that is a guitar that we'll be mentioning again, used by Noel, because Noel has used a Ronnie Wood J200 signature model. Now let's talk about some of the other acoustic guitars that Noel has used over the years. In the early days of Oasis, before they had any money, uh, Noel used basically a copy of a Gibson J200 made by Epiphone. Epiphone, of course, is the import brand. You know, guitars made overseas, they're 
generally speaking, about uh, a fourth or sometimes even one eighth of the price of the actual Gibson model. And typically they're made with laminated woods. They're not necessarily all solid woods. Still, they're solid players. They look cool and they're rugged instruments. You can see Knowles EJ200 Epiphone on the cover of their first album, Definitely Maybe. When Noel first started getting some money rolling in from the first two albums, he bought a vintage Epiphone guitar, which actually was made in the same factory as Gibson at the time. Uh, it is an Epiphone Frontier model. It's got this really cool cactus and rope sort of pit guard thing on the side, and uh, it's actually maple. And it's got a really cool sound. Uh, if you want to hear this guitar in action, Check out the MTV sessions for the, uh, the song Who Feels Love. It's an acoustic version. And uh, both him and Gim Archer are actually using Epiphone Frontiers, and it sounds great. Additionally, on some of the uh, first tours that Oasis were doing, uh, Noel was often seen playing a Takamini, a Japanese guitar, sort of known for their stage performance. They, at the time... Acoustic guitar amplification was not great. A lot of guitars were prone to feedback problems, and Takamini was sort of the uh, the big dog in town at the time of guitars that played well and sounded really good on stage at the time. But now there's so many great acoustic pickup manufacturers, Fishman, LR Bags, and things like that, where you can take basically any nice guitar and make it sound like a million bucks on stage. So as the money started rolling in, Noel did purchase some additional guitars. Again, like I had said earlier, he purchased a Gibson SJ200 Ronnie Wood model. And you know you can see it in this picture here. It looks just like the J150, except it has binding around the headstock and binding up and down the neck. Noel purchased a Gibson J185, which is a slightly smaller body than the J200, Again, it's all maple back and sides, shorter scale length, uh, also a very cool guitar. It has these split parallelogram style inlays on the neck. That's how you could differentiate that from the J200, that plus it's a little bit smaller body, but basically the same body shape and similar sound. Now, a lot of guitarists find themselves to be very brand loyal. Sometimes they have you know, contracts with some of these guitar manufacturing companies and uh, they stay very brand loyal and up, up to this point you know Noel had pretty much exclusively used Gibson and Epiphone acoustic guitars so he kind of shocked a lot of acoustic players including myself when recently I say recently last few years he's been spotted a lot with a Martin Dreadnought which he describes as a D28 in an interview that he purchased uh, right off the rack in a shop in London uh, of course, the internet disagrees, saying that it's just a regular D28, noting that due to its herringbone trim, it's most likely an HD28. However, there was a weird HD28 model sold in that era that had a black pit guard called the HD28P, which I think is this model. Now, it's possible that it could just be an off-the-shelf HD28, and he decided to change out the tortoiseshell pit guard with a black one, or it's also possible that it was a custom model. Now, if you want to check out Noel playing all these guitars that I just mentioned, both the Gibsons and the, uh, the new Martin, check out something on Netflix called Once in a Lifetime Sessions. It's really a, a really cool interview and some sort of intimate playing by Noel just by himself. It's sort of a, an inside look at his songwriting and how some of these songs uh, came to be, and you'll get some good up close uh, shots of him playing not only the J150 but the other ones that I mentioned. By the way, Noel really likes that J150 so much that uh, he actually went and bought another J150, a blonde one, before the tour that he went on U2 when he was uh, fronting High Flying Birds. And uh, so you can actually see that guitar here in this picture. Now, if you hang out on a lot of the guitar forums like I do, there is not a lot of love for Noel Gallagher amongst what I will call the gifted guitar players and the people that really appreciate people that are highly, highly skilled and, you know, super fast players and nuanced finger style players, things like that. Because Noel is basically a strummer. He's never really made any claim to be a great guitarist. He's more of a great songwriter. 
He's a great singer-songwriter, and he will be the first to admit he's not the greatest guitar player in the world. But one really cool thing that inspired me when I was uh, first starting to play guitar was the fact that a lot of Noel's songs were not that technically challenging. And, you know, there were simple chords, basic strumming patterns, things like that, but they still made great songs. In fact, so much that a lot of the Oasis songs that were really, you know, hard-driving rock and roll songs, they released sort of, you know, B-side or demo versions of those songs just acoustically because that's actually how those songs were written. And uh, I, I thought I heard Noel once say in an interview that, you know, basically uh, any great song, any great rock and roll song that would be normally played with electric guitar, if it's a great song, it can be a great acoustic song as well. And I think that's how a lot of his started. Now, again, I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. When I first heard about it, I was a little worried because I was a little late to the game and I thought, how on earth did I miss this? I'm, you know, again, I'm a big Oasis fan, big Noel Gallagher fan, and just a big fan of guitars in general. And started doing some inquiries about ordering one of these, only to find out that they were all pre-ordered here in the U.S. However, through a little detective work of my own, I was made able to secure one, and I will have one in June, hopefully, uh, bought it from Guitar Center Hollywood of all places. So again, super excited. When I get it, I'm going to do a review, demo video, that sort of thing, maybe unboxing, who knows. But uh, anyway, I'm just I'm thrilled this is actually going to happen. It's not an April Fool's joke. It's real. And uh, it seems just like the ultimate thing for any real Oasis fan, Noel Gallagher fan, as a guitar player. Again, he's inspired me over the years, not only to be a better guitar player, a better songwriter, and uh, I'm just so thrilled that this is happening and can't wait to June. So check back. Please like this video, share it with your friends, and we will see you next time.